Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to be walking you through how I build out my period and date headers. You'll see here a cash flow, a real estate cash flow statement, and uh, here at the top I have four values in my header. Uh, I have two that identify the period, either the monthly or the annual period. I have one that identifies the actual year in which an annual period ends, and then the fourth here identifies the actual date that a monthly period ends. And I use each of these values differently. That's why I have four, uh, just depending on the formula or the situation in which they'll need to be used. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm assuming that this is a 12-year analysis period or a 144 monthly period uh, analysis. Um, I'm assuming an analysis start of July 1st, 2015. And so I'm going to start with the monthly row, first identify the first period, it's one, and then every period thereafter is going to add one additional period. And so uh, we just go ahead and copy these across all the way out to 144 periods or 12 years. I then do the yearly periods, and again, um, how this is going to look, right, is month 1 through 12 is going to be year 1. Uh, 13 through 24, year two, and so forth. And so what I do is I use a roundup formula tied to the month. So I round up the month, uh, the month period we're in, and I divide that month period by 12, rounding to the nearest one. And the result, you'll notice here, is that we get 1 through 12, 2 through 24, etc. right? All the way through year 12. And there we have it. So, those are the easy ones. Next we get into the year end. Now, I'm not going to specify the actual date that the year ends. You could do that. I prefer just to state the year in which this annual period ends. So, if, for instance, in this uh, situation, the analysis start is July 1st, 2015, this first year will end June 30th, 2016. And so I want to output here through the entire first year, 2016. And then as we move to year two, that's going to be 2017, 2018, and so forth. So to do this, I'm, I'm going to take a couple steps. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the date of the end of the very first monthly period. Not an easy one. I'm going to use an EO month formula. I grab the analysis start, right? And uh, EO month basically says uh, choose a month and then uh, how many months forward. We're going to do zero months forward. And so it chooses that and then it's just going to identify the last day of that month. That's really easy. So now we have, this is the, the end, the last day of the first monthly period. Well, the year end is essentially going to be 11 months after that, correct? So it's a, we use an e-date, grab that, go 11 months forward, and that's the value. Now, I'm not going to change this. Right now, this is in a different format, so it's not showing you a date. And the reason I don't want to change it is because I'm actually wanting, uh, this is going to be a number at the end. It's going to be 2016, right? So, but that is the date. Uh, and I'll show you just so you see. There we go, June 30th, 2016. I'll undo that. Now, I don't want the date, though. I just want the year. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to ask, what's the year of that date that we just created? And it's 2016. And so we're good for, for this period. Um, but we want to be able to copy this over to the very end. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open this formula back up. I'm going to lock in place this day, because this date now is going to be absolute. From here, we're going to track all dates going forward. We're then going to say, okay, we're going to take this year, and we're going to add the year period up top. Okay? The problem is now we're going to be one year ahead, so we're going to minus out one year. And the result, 2016, what happens is once we get to the second annual period, which happens here in column O, it adds two, minus is one, and it gives us 2017, and so forth. You go through year three, it should be 2018, and it is, right? 
We'll go ahead and copy this over all the way to the end. We've got our annual. And then finally, the month end, and this is the easy one. Uh, we already have um, our month end for monthly period one. We just go ahead, do another EO month, grab the, the previous date, add one month to it. There we have it. Copy it to the end. And we're done. And so that is how I set up my period and date header. Uh, you may have uh, your own methods, and if you do, please let me know. Um, I'm always interested to hear uh, how other people do these. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me a message. Thanks.